gang! In this video, we are going to make a cut and sew knit sweater with ribbed cuffs and a ribbed neckline and a ribbed hem. Let's start first by making the ribbing and then we'll work on the sweater. One of the ways that I like to make ribbing is to use the stroke panel. So let's zoom into the template just so we can get the scale right and create our ribbing. I'm going to draw a path with my pen tool and I'm going to go to the stroke panel and make this path as wide as I need it to be in order to um, cover the ribbing. I want to make sure that the caps are set to this flat cap, the first one, and I'm going to make this really wide, something like there, we, 26 points. That looks pretty good. Now, in order to create the ribbing, we're going to play around with the dash line settings. Now, by default, your dash line is going to be set to 12, which is not really right. So we are going to go ahead and change all of these and we're going to get a much nicer looking rib. So I see a lot of people do their ribs at one point, but that's really chunky and heavy looking and it kind of overwhelms the flat. So I prefer not to do it that way. What I like to do is set the first dash to 0.25, the second dash to one, and now we have a single rib. If we want to make a double rib, I'll do 0.25 again on this dash, and on the next gap, I'm going to choose 0.5, so it's half the size of the first gap. And now I've got this beautiful looking double rib, and we can save this for use in the future. I want to make sure there's no fill on it, and now I can go to my graphic styles, make a new graphic style, and we'll call this um, 2 by 2 rib. Whoops, come on, two by two rib, there we go. And that's, that's it. So now let's go ahead and build our sweater and we'll use our rib where needed. Now, before I build any flat, I always start with a template and you can download my template for free. It's in the comments or in the section below. The description, that's the word I was looking for. It's in the description below uh, and you are welcome to a free copy of it. So let's get started now. I am going to grab D for default and P for pen tool and start drawing. Now, instead of starting at center front, I'm going to start at high point shoulder and not just at high point shoulder, but I want this to be a larger scoop neckline. So I'm going to start a little further away from the neckline. My second click will be on the shoulder, third click under the arm, and here we'll make it a bulky sweater, so I'll keep it a little bit wide. And then my fourth click is the hem. And then just to make this a little bit interesting, my fifth click is going to be for the ribbing. And I'm going to move that in a little bit because I like my ribbing to taper. Now let's drag out the pen tools. What I want to use next is my convert anchor point tool. And the shortcut is shift C. I'm going to grab my armhole and give that a nice little curve. I can go ahead and grab my sweater and give that a little curve to kind of bulk it out a little bit. Let's do that. And we're going to leave this ribbing the way it is. We're going to switch to the black arrow, select it, O to reflect, Alt or Option key on the center, Guide, select Vertical, and Copy. And now with the black arrow, I'm going to select both sides, right click, Join, and you can see that connects the neckline, and right click, Join a second time to join the hem. Now. Again, with the anchor point tool, we're going to click right in the center and curve the neckline. But I'm not in love with that shape, so I will undo Command-Z. And this time when I curve the neckline, I'm going to hold the Shift key to give it a little bit of a different shape. And I think I like that better for this particular sweater. I'm also going to curve the hem the tiniest little bit just to make it look nicer. Now, while we're on the bodice, I guess we should go ahead and do the rib on the hemline. So I'm going to grab my pen tool and I'm going to start by clicking outside the shirt, then right on that anchor point, on the anchor point on the other side, and outside the shirt again. The reason I'm clicking outside the shirt is to make sure I don't have any problems when I use Pathfinder Divide. We're going to grab the anchor point tool again and we're going to curve this to match the hem so we get a nice line. 
we're going to also make sure that this dividing line does not have a fill because that will cause problems. Now let's open Pathfinder. We're going to go up to Window, down to Pathfinder, and we're going to use Pathfinder Divide, which is the first one on the bottom. Whoops. Let's select both of these again. So you can see I selected both pieces, the shirt and the dividing line. Pathfinder Divide, right click, ungroup. And you can see the pieces that were sticking out, they disappeared anyway, so they weren't really a problem. Let's add the ribbing. To add ribbing, we do it as a clipping mask. So we're going to start by drawing a line that goes from one end to the other. We're going to curve it so it matches the curve that we've already got going. And then we can go to our graphic styles and click on our rib. Now, you'll notice that the angle of the rib is not matching the angle of the shirt, and for me, that's a problem. So I'm going to continue on with my anchor point tool, and I'm going to pull the handle in the other direction until the rib follows the contour of my shirt. And I'm going to do the same on this side as well to make sure that they're aligned. That looks much better. Now I can take the black arrow, select my ribbing, and use the arrow keys on my keyboard to nudge it down so that it covers. And you can see I have a problem. It's not covering the entire band. So let's make it bigger. This is one of the benefits of doing this as, um, excuse me, using the stroke panel for this instead of using a brush. It's interactive and it's really easy to edit. So we're going to go to the appearance panel and the appearance panel, in case you're not sure, is the one with the little sun icon on it. So we're going to go to the appearance panel and I'm going to put it back with my others. And what we're going to do is click on the stroke and we're going to make the stroke bigger. You can just keep clicking bigger until it's big enough to cover the entire waistband and I probably probably a little overkill here. I can probably make this a little smaller and just nudge it up a little bit higher. There we go. So now it covers. All right. Now in order to make a clipping mask, the ribbing has to go behind the waistband. So I'm going to select the ribbing. I'm going to cut it. Control or Command X. Then I'm going to select the waistband and paste in back. Control or Command B. Now it's in the right order. I can hold my shift key, select the waistband. Wow, my computer's lagging a little bit today. I think it's the heat. It is not happy. And now that I've selected the waistband and the ribbing, I can right click, make clipping mask, and it's going to put the ribbing inside of my waistband, which is beautiful, except that we lost the fill and stroke that was already on the waistband. That's okay. It's easy to restore. You're going to grab the white arrow. You're going to click on the edge. So we don't want to click in the middle, but we need to click right on the edge of the waistband. And then you can hit D for default on your keyboard to restore your white fill and your black stroke. And now you've got a ribbed waistband on your sweater. Let's go ahead and do the back bodice. I'm going to select the front. I'm going to copy it, going to paste in back. And now I'm going to right click, isolate selected path. So I'm just looking at the one I pasted in back. I'll open my layers so you can see it better. So here's what we're looking at. Let's go ahead and fill this with gray. And I guess for now, that's all we need to do to it. So we're going to double. Oh, that's not true. <laughs> we need to raise the neckline. We're going to grab the anchor point tool. I'm going to click on the center back neckline and I'm going to raise it up to whatever height I would like it at. And now we're going to go back to the black arrow and double click anywhere on the page to release it. Now we've got our front and our back. Let's go ahead and add the ribbing to the neckline. Again, because I'm going to divide it with Pathfinder, I'm going to start outside click wherever I want my ribbing to start in terms of the width of the ribbing. So maybe there. I'm going to hold the shift key and go to the other side until, see how intersect pops up? That's what we want to do to make sure that we are even. And then we're going to click outside again. We're going to get rid of the fill. And with the anchor point tool, we're going to hold the shift key down because that's how we drew this in the first place. And we are going to drag out 
the shape to get a beautiful shape. Now to make life a little bit easier, I'm also going to select the shape and I'm going to copy it. And I'm just going to hold that in my copy for a little bit so that we can add it to the back. So now I'm going to select this line. I'm going to hold my shift key and select the bodice and we can do Pathfinder, divide, right click, ungroup. And now while we still have this line, we're going to double click on the back to go into isolation mode. I'm going to paste in front to paste that back. And now let's grab the anchor point tool and adjust this so it's the correct width for the back. So that way we didn't have to draw it a second time. And now we can select that piece and the back. Pathfinder divide, right click, ungroup, and we'll double click to exit isolation mode. Now we can add our ribbing to both of these. So with the pen tool, I'm going to click right in the center and right in the center. I'm going to grab my anchor point tool and hold my shift key and drag a line down and we are going to click on our ribbing. Now in this case the ribbing lines up a lot closer but it's not perfect so we're going to grab this and see if we can't control the angle a little bit. That's much better and I'm going to do the same over here that is also much better. And I can also, if there's just too much extra here, again, we can go to the appearance panel, click on stroke, and we can make this a little bit smaller so it's just not covering so much ground there. And now we can select that, cut, right? Command or Control X, select our neckline, paste and back, Command or Control B, Hold the shift key, select the neckline, right click, make living mask. Use your white arrow, release, select the edge, and then hit D for default to restore your fill. We'll do the back, uh, well, let's do the back. I am going to go into isolation mode so we can make sure to see the edges really well. So I'm going to double click to go into isolation mode. Again, with the pen tool, we're going to click here, click here. We're going to curve it, again, holding the shift key so the curves match. We're going to go to graphic styles, click on the rib. And in this case, it's actually pretty close. Let's move that out just a tiny bit more. Whoops, that's not. Whoops, control Z. Sometimes it gets away from you. It's actually not bad. I think maybe if we make it just a little smaller, it would be helpful. So let's make it a little smaller and then I can, there we go, that's a little better. I can adjust this shape. Whoop, this one wants to come this way. There we go. All right, so now that I've got the shape the way I want it, we will select that, cut it, Command or Control X, Shift click to Oops, sorry, I lied. Then we're going to paste in back, Command or Control B. Then we're going to shift click to grab the collar. And then right click, make clipping mask. Oops, do I have it selected? I don't think I had both selected. Let's do that again. Right click, make clipping mask. There we go. And again, with the white arrow, we're going to click on the outline and hit D for default to get the fill and stroke back in. Go to the black arrow, double click to exit isolation mode, and we've got a lovely sweater vest. All right, let's, um, let's get some sleeves going here. I am going to grab my white arrow, click in the armhole, copy, paste in front, and with my pen tool, I'm going to click at the shoulder, go down to the hem, across, and back up to where we started. I am going to shape the sleeve and divide it, but I think it'll be a little easier if we divide it first. So let's go ahead and draw a line, whoops, control C, where we want to divide the sleeve. And I think to make this a little bit prettier, let's go ahead and curve this a little bit and curve this just a little bit. Actually, I'm going to undo that. I'm not going to curve the bottom yet. 
I'm just going to curve this a little bit and I want to keep it subtle and I want to make sure that it has no fill and then again black arrow select the sleeve and that pathfinder divide right click ungroup now I'm going to taper this a little bit so with the add an anchor point tool I'm going to add an anchor point inside just a little bit on both sides and with the delete an anchor point tool I'm going to delete the ones in the corner just to give a little taper to this and now I can use the anchor point tool to give this a little curve to match that and that looks a lot nicer. I'm also going to add an anchor point right above and use my arrow key to nudge that out a little bit and I'm going to do the same on the other side just to give it a little bit of bulk kind of coming in to the sleeve of the sweater and maybe we'll give it a little bit of bulk on top too. I'll use my anchor point tool and we'll curve that up a little bit and I can play with this handle to bulk it up as much or as little as I like and maybe we'll we'll puff this out a little bit too and if we're yeah, well, let's do it. Let's just kind of make this a balloony, puffy sort of sweater sleeve. All right, so now we've got our sleeve. We need to go ahead and add our ribbing. And if we want, we can, well, let's finesse this a little bit. We're going to select the sleeve and then double click on the pencil tool. I want you to make sure that it has keep selected checked and edit selected paths checked and then click OK. Now with the pencil tool, you can go ahead and draw over anything you have selected and it will redraw that shape. And that's kind of fun for adding little bits of texture to things. Now, obviously that's much too much. So let's, let's kind of keep this a little simpler. I am not loving this. I'm using a mouse, not using a, um, excuse me, not using a, a tablet. So control is a little more difficult but yeah not loving it we're gonna skip that but now you know how to do it maybe what we need to do is just kind of pull it out that way Oop, let's delete this anchor point and curve it a little bit in this way so we get more of that shape and we'll pull this out that's better I like that a lot better now maybe we'll try adding a little bit of a, a lump to it. We'll grab the pencil tool and we'll just kind of come out a little bit and in. Now that makes a little more sense. Still not beautiful, but I'm not going to make this video take forever. So I'm going to go with it. And I am just going to take this line and continue it up a little bit like so. And we're going to go to the stroke panel and we're going to change the profile to this one and that gives it a little bit of life and we could do another little bulk there but I am going to leave it but now I don't like the angle that this is on right this looks kind of weird so what if we take the white arrow select it click on rotate click here to make it the pivot point and try to spin this around a little bit how does that work? That's actually not bad, but it gave us a little bit too much wrinkle here. So let's just get rid of some of that. Let's just delete a couple of these points. And I know I'm kind of futzing around here, but sometimes that's what it takes when you're working. You just have to play around a little bit and see what comes out, right? So I think this is better. We're going to go with this and hold on. I think we want to delete maybe this anchor point or is there another one there? There is and we'll curve this out a little bit better. There we go. That's feeling better. But now it makes me want to move this because this doesn't feel like it's in the right spot anymore. There's nothing happening there. This needs to go here. We'll click R for rotate, 
click here to make that the pivot point and I'm going to rotate it up so it aligns nicely with that line and this should have no fill so we're going to get rid of the fill. Now we're talking that's looking a lot nicer. Okay sometimes that's what it takes a little bit of futzing around except this anchor point is not working for me. Hopefully I won't destroy the whole thing by deleting it but here goes. Yep, I did. Control Z. Okay. So instead, what I think we'll do is take the white arrow and we'll just move that down a little bit. There we go. That way we don't destroy the whole shape of the sleeve. Beautiful. Let's add that ribbing. So for the ribbing now, we're going to take the pen tool. We're going to draw a line. We're going to go our graphic styles. Apply the rib. We are going to rotate it with the anchor point tool or tweak it with the anchor point tool, right? To make sure that it is following the curve of our cuff. And it's weird, but for this, it always goes in the opposite direction. And sometimes you need to use the anchor point tool the white arrow, sorry, sometimes you need to use the anchor point tool and sometimes you just need to grab the white arrow and manipulate the handles a little bit to get it where you want it. And that looks pretty good. You can see that the ribbing is aligning with my cuff. So now I'll select the ribbing. I will cut it, command X. I will click on the cuff. I will paste in back, command B. Select both pieces, right click, make clipping mask. With the white arrow, I'm going to click on the edge and hit D for default, and that takes care of my sleeve. I will select all the pieces that make it up, group it together, and reflect it to the other side. So we're going to click the shortcut O to reflect, Alt or Option click on your center guide, vertical, copy, and there's our sleeve on the other side. So a nice little bulky cut and sew sweater with our um, ribbed cuff and ribbed hem. Now let's go ahead and add the knit pattern that I created in another video and I'll leave a link to that video at the end of this one if you haven't seen it yet. We're going to switch to the group selection tool and I'm going to click on this and add my rib knit and we'll click on this and add my rib knit and this one add my rib knit. Now I don't know that I'm in love with the red so let's talk about how we can change the color here. With something selected you can go to the appearance panel and you'll notice that this is made up of my rib knit fill and then a color. Let's change the color from red to a nice blue and we'll do the same for the rest of these. We'll change this from red to blue and this one also from red to blue. And if you don't want to keep doing that, we can go to graphic styles and create a new graphic style. And this can be my blue knit. Now let's match the ribbing to the knit. I can select all of the ribbing pieces. So there's this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. And what we want to do is change the fill color, right? Because we selected the cuffs, not the ribbing part. And if we change it, we can change the fill to match. So everything is consistent. And let's also change the fill in the back, but maybe a, a darker version of that color. So what if we did, no, don't like that. We are instead going to go here and just make a darker version of that color much better and that takes care of our sweater let's take a closer look at it and no it actually does not we still have a problem you'll notice when I zoom back out a little bit that the direction of the print or of the knit pattern is not right for the sleeve so we need to fix that I'm gonna take the group selection tool I'm gonna click on the sleeve I'm going to go to the appearance panel and make sure that the layer that's active is the fill layer with the knit. And now I can double click on rotate to open it up and notice how the sleeve moved. That's because transform objects is selected. We want to turn that off. 
we only want to transform the pattern. And if you highlight the angle here, you can use the arrow key on your keyboard to nudge it around. Now, whoops, preview on, preview off. Let's grab this. There we go. Why is nothing working? Let's cancel that and do this again. Let's make sure that we have this selected. We are going to be active in the fill layer. Double click on rotate. Now we got it going and we can hit the arrow key and you can see that I'm moving it around so that it's coming out of the sweater in a direction that is a little bit better for the shirt. Looks a little bit better and we'll click OK and we'll do the same thing on the other side. We're going to select it. We're going to make sure the fill is selected. Double click on rotate and we can use our, whoops, we want to go the other way. So it's the up arrow or the down arrow that is allowing me to nudge this and change the angle. And I think we are almost there. And we'll click OK. And that takes care of the front of our shirt or our sweater, sorry. So let us select everything and group it together. I'm going to hold my Alt or Option key and click and drag this out of the way. And we're going to turn this one into the back. Let's double click to go into isolation mode. And we're going to delete everything that we don't need on the back. We don't need the bodice, so we'll select and delete it. We don't need the front ribbing, select and delete. And we need to change this to our knit pattern. We can go to graphic styles and click on blue knit double click to exit and our sweater is complete. So let's move this over a little bit. This is our cut and sew sweater and now you know how to do ribbing. In another video I'll show you how to do a fully fashion sweater. I appreciate your supporting my channel with your likes and comments so please please talk to me. I'd love to hear from you. See you in the next video.